Hi, welcome to the show. In this episode, we'll be doing something a bit different. Uh, a few uh, shows back, I did a um, tear down of a little um, Hot Wheels RC car. Now, the problem with that car was the range wasn't that great, and it wasn't particularly fast either. So, if you were, um, the car was pointing in the right direction, and you were down the other end of the hall, it would stop receiving any signal. Also, uh, even further back, I did another budget RC car, and its uh, downfall was you could only run one car at a time. So, the next couple of episodes will be trying to put together a solution where uh, that won't be a factor. So, the range won't be a pro problem, and the amount of cars you want to run won't be a problem either, because we'll be using a, um, a Wi Fi chip within the car to drive the motors and the steering. So, this is the first episode. We'll have a couple of episodes as we put it together, and the main part, of course, is going to be the brain. So we'll have a look at the brain now and see what we come up with. So the crucial part of this project is going to be the brain. Uh, it needs to have wireless capability and it needs to pulse width modulation so we can have a variable speed for the motor going forward and backwards. We can't do much about the steering on this car because as you would have seen in the teardown it's a sort of a solenoid setup, so it's either uh, left or right. There's no sort of servo type thing, so it's halfway in between. And also, it has to be small. So, we sort of spoiled for choice for what we could use, but what we've currently got in here is a um, chip on board with a with a uh, with a driver chip, which runs the whole shoot and match. Uh, it's not a lot of room in here and there's not, not a lot of power from the batteries so almost certainly going to need to put a larger voltage battery inside it somewhere maybe even just sit it on top up here with the rest of the new bits and pieces sit on top um, so the go-to thing for these sorts of projects possibly could be an Arduino uh, the only problem with this is obviously it's, it's about as big as the car uh, I know these come in different sizes, so I could probably get one uh, that would fit in there. But also I need Wi-Fi, so if I was going to use this even, I'd need another shield to go across, uh, across the top to run the, the Wi-Fi. Uh, I know there's the smaller versions that come with all those sorts of bells and whistles as well, but they're not uh, terribly cheap. Uh, the other thing that I've used in the past for these kind of projects is something called a pickaxe. Uh, now this is just a pick micro which has a um, basic well bootloader I guess like a bit of a word term uh, and you program it with like a earphone plug you write your code in basic program with the earphone plug and you're away laughing so I wouldn't actually need to use this board I could just all I need to do is use the chip and it's supporting circuitry but also it it still doesn't have any um, wireless capability, so I have to have another module on top as well. So I was searching around and I came across this uh, little unit, which is a uh, ESP, and it has uh, it's got its Wi-Fi and everything in one. You you could I could settle this with the with the pickaxe so I could send signals to this and they in turn pass them on but <clears throat> this unit has the ability to be programmed in itself so you would just need this to drive the car. The only problem with this particular unit is that uh, it only has, from what I can gather, it only has two outputs so I need at least four so forward and back left and right. I could probably make it nice and complicated for myself and try another circuit just to um, grab more inputs from from the only the two that this supplies supplies. But I found a better option. This cost nine dollars, and it's this one, which is uh, exactly the same sort of thing, but it has multiple I/Os, and this one was was four dollars. So makes sense just to run with this one. Uh, I've just made this little jig, it doesn't come like this, it usually just comes with a board. The pins aren't breadboard um, 
compatible so you've got to add these extra pins on to get it uh, rock and rolling on the breadfort for testing so I'm going to roll with this but also what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a similar to the, the pickaxe a basic um, compiler I guess so you install you flash the unit and then you can start writing the code in basic to run that you don't have to run basic you can run the uh, Arduino IDE if you wanted to but I'm just trying to keep it simple so anybody can have a crack at this and do not that Arduino is complicated but for really basic stuff basic programming is um, a good start so it's a nice tiny size so I need to fit that on and I also need a driver board to run the motors because I won't be able to drive the motors directly from this because I won't have the power to do it without uh, cooking itself so what we'll do is we'll hook this up and uh, get it programmed with the uh, basic um, flash ROM and see how we go from there ok for this project I'll be flashing my ESP module with a, a a version of basic now the website to go to to get that is esp8266basic.com and just shoot over to the website go to download you can download uh, this for windows and there's it's also, also possible to run it on mac and, and linux it's a slightly more complicated procedure i'll be downloading it for windows even though i'm on linux at the moment and then running it off the um, Windows uh, Windows 10 just because it's just simpler. So let's click on that. It'll start the download, and then just run that in Windows. But before we run it, we need to configure the chip uh, on our breadboard so it's in the right um, configuration to accept a a uh, reflash. So we'll do that next. Ok so before we can uh, flash this thing we need to configure it up in the, our breadboard so the um, minimum pins you need to hook up for it to run are the, the power um, this pin here which turns the unit on so if you were using this with another controller and you wanted to save power then you would deactivate this pin when you weren't using the Wi-Fi but seeing how we're using the controller to use the whole thing is virtually never you want the chip to be disabled so you just have to always tie that to your, your power supply the other thing we need to do is hook up the, the ground and this is on the pin up here as well as GPIO 15 it needs to be grounded as well um, from what I gather if that's not grounded uh, as well, the unit will try and boot off uh, an external device or something along those lines. So you're always going to want that to be set to um, ground. So the the ground pin and the pin right next to it, which is GPIO 15, needs to be set to ground also. The other pins I've connected here is the RX uh, receive and transmit going to the uh, Arduino board. I'm just using the Arduino board here just as a glorified uh, RS232 uh, adapter because <clears throat> the ones I have, the other ones I have don't seem to have enough grunt. Also this one's good because it's got the RX and TX lights on it so you can see if anything's actually working and I'm pulling the 5 volts off the, the board as well to supply current to my 3.3 volt buck converter here so if I wasn't flashing this at the moment I'll be leaving this other pin here which is GPIO0 um, so I think we're going nowhere because then it's not in flash mode but with that's tied to ground it puts the chip into flash mode so I'll just power this up and we'll just see what happens with that off it flashes once and then it when, it, when you first power it on and then when you when you uh, wait for a few seconds it flashes again that's when that, uh, whatever is programmed onto there is ready to run so what I'll do is I'll just demonstrate we've downloaded the uh, firmware for the basic version so I'll just um, hook that up and just demonstrate what it looks like when we're trying to program it 
<clears throat> okay, so to get this into flash mode, I need to put the TPIO0 into ground. Then come over to my ESP Basic software, choose COM port, and this one's got 4 meg, and then click on Firmware Flash. So you'll notice on here the light is flashing flat out, just saying that it's receiving data. And on our Arduino we've got a TXRX line going uh, going half later as well. It just takes a few seconds for it to um, reflash the software. Whilst doing that, just notice when I'm using this Arduino board, it's got no no chip in it. Done. So once it's done, it shows you on the screen how much it's um, completed. Then it boots up and connects to my Wi-Fi point here. I hadn't already configured this previously. It would come up and just say um, I haven't got any IP address and just boot up as a uh, AP point. So this connects straight away using your phone or your any sort of web browser to the IP address 192.168.4.1. So we'll just browse to that location and just see what. Um, What's there? Okay, so once you've first got it flashed, you need to go and just um, join the access point that the uh, module is created, which is going to be ESP followed by these funny digits. These funny digits are uh, just a MAC address, so they'll be different on yours, or hopefully, they'll be different on yours to mine. So you just uh, join that one. This is and Linux computer, but it's the same for Windows or Mac. You'll have an extra access point. Just click on it. <clears throat> so it's joined, and then put in your IP address 192.168.4.1. And this is the uh, web page of the module itself. So to make life easier for yourself, it would be uh, good just to put this machine on your local network so you can browse the internet while um, playing with the module. So we'll just pop in the settings here, type in the name of your uh, access point. I've had bad experiences with Balkan, so that's why it's called that. IP address, which is in the same subnet as your network. and then save, update and restart. So it'll go away and restart now and when it comes back up it should be join, It should automatically join our, our local network here so I can browse the internet as well as um, play around with the unit. So just change this to the address that I assigned to it and hopefully she should just pop up and we're back in again but we're on the local network, so I can still go to uh, the outside world if I need to. Um, so we've got a list of options across here, the VARs, gives you a um, list of variables you're using in your program and the, outside, and the uh, status of the IO pins. Edit, this is where we'll be writing our basic application, run, runs the program, debug, this is another uh, way to check on the variables and they'll step through each line of code for, for testing so you know exactly what's happening. Settings have just been in and file manager uh, just let you upgrow, upload sort of CESS files and things like that if you needed to. So I'll pop in the edit and go to the um, ESP basic website and to the documentation for one of the examples. Well, the simplest ones here would be this GPIO and PWM server example. So I'll just cut and paste the code. And then run. So this is just asking for an IO pin number. 
and I've got a LED here hooked up to pin 5 or IO5 and if I change that to 1 it should just turn this LED on which it does I change it back to 0 off again it's got set pin PWM here which is pulse width modulation which would be the module trying to uh, mimic an analog output so for example uh, pulse width modulation on this you know, has 1024 steps so if we put on 500 technically we should make the LED half the brightness and change that back to 1 and you can see it's actually dimmer so this pulse width modulation is going to be using for the motor on the RC car to give it a um, different a variable speed rather than what it's got at the moment which is um, flat out or, or off so knowing that it works we should be able to hook it up and control the engine on the on the motor uh, with a variable speed okay so another cool thing about this is now that we've um, flashed the unit we don't need the RX and TX lines going from the Arduino anymore and we don't need this wire either because we're not going to unless we decide to flash it again so we don't need that one either so all we've got left is the power this is just a reset so if I flick it onto there onto the ground unit reboots uh, yeah, chip activate VCC and the two, two pins up here that have to be grounded to make it work so when I try it on my phone I set pin 5 which is the one the LED is hooked up to and I change the status to O or off we can control it so it's pretty cool for a few minutes work to be uh, up and running okay so that's the end of this episode what we found is we found a brain to run the car a little ESP8266 uh, based module so it'll be able to turn the steering on uh, left and right accelerate and reverse um, and some other IO pins there we might be able to find things to do with later on as well so that will end this episode uh, in the episode we need to find a way to be able to drive those motors because this uh, module doesn't have the current capability to be able to uh, push out the currents required to push the motors. So They're not huge amounts of currents but for this little unit it's only I think 12 milliamps is max it'll handle and these motors can go into the hundreds. So we'll take on that challenge next week. We'll see you then.